Hello, I'm Jude Scott. Thanks for joining me. Today is all about mixing the blues. Mix up your own warm and cool blues. And after you learn how to do that, we'll look at mixing your own greys with Holbein watercolours. Um, the chart on the extreme right, you can see I've mixed previously, and they're the colours that we're going to produce today. I've started with a generous puddle of quite strong ultramarine. The red I've used there is Rose Matter, and I'm going to use some quinacridone gold. These are all Holbein watercolours, and you'll see how to mix your own blues, which is really important because you need to be able to mix cool blues, warm blues, and also your green greys and blue greys. So just start. Um, it's fun to do and great reference to have with all about mixing your blue. So just starting with a puddle of just straight ultramarine and into that I'm going to put the tiniest amount of rose matter. So as I go to the top of the paper um, it will get warmer and I'm aiming to do it just slightly warmer every time. I'm not adding more water to my master mix, I'm just adding a little bit more rose matter. And you can run into problems if you put too much tone on your brush like if I add too much rose matter you'll go too purple too quickly so it's a fantastic exercise to do to get used to using your brushes and also warming up the colors that you want so that one could do with a little bit extra there make it just that bit warmer and you can see I now I've got five tones of blue starting with the neutral ultramarine and just getting warmer as I go up the page so I'll just clean out that puddle. Um, I've just forgotten to put down my sponge soaker upper. Um, it's great to have something to dry your brush on. It's the correct amount of water. The ratio of water to pigment is so important. And I found these car wash chamois. They're just blue blocks that you can buy at the, you know, the red dot here in Australia and or in Perth anyway um, and you can just take any excess water out so I've got to tidy up the palette a little bit to make room for some more paint now with this I'm going cooler this time so I'm putting a bit of yellow into the ultramarine and this is quinacridone gold now quinacridone gold is a synthetic yellow it's very transparent and it's very, very bright. It was actually invented originally by the car industry for paint working and painting cars. So um, they spend billions every year making the most wonderful colours and it's fantastic addition to your ultramarine. Just look at that gorgeous green. It's a lovely Australian olive bush green, um, the one that I'm doing now. The one just there now is more of the blue greens, but I think... When you're mixing your own colours, it's the ones that get furthest away from the uh, original master mix of the pure colour that is so interesting and so so helpful to be able to mix these up for anything that you're painting. I'm just cleaning out the palette again now and I'll start with the next another mix for the next um, lot of blues. Blue is... In everything in nature, it's in the greens that you see, it's in the sky, it's in the ocean. Most plants, if you're planting any vegetation, sorry, if you're painting any vegetation, always has blue in it. So it's fantastic to know how to make that blue go warmer or how to make that blue go cooler. Um, otherwise, you might end up with an, a lime green that you're not happy with. Um, I don't use any pre-mixed greens in my palette because I can always mix my own um, and I think it's a, a great talent to have. So this time I'm going to use um, Rose Matter. Sorry, I'm not using Rose Matter. I'm using Quinacridone Red and I'm going to use Oriolan Yellow. So you'll see that we'll get different cool blues and different warm blues using a different red and a different yellow and you can try this for every blue in your palette you will get different colors and you'll find that somewhere you'll find colors that you really like for your own personal 
color palette when you're painting will just appeal to you more than any others. So again, just the tiniest amount of red to warm up that basic ultramarine blue. And a little bit more of the quinacridone red. It's um, actually a cooler blue with quinacridone red, I think, than the rose matter. Just slightly cooler, but so interesting to be able to do that. If you're painting any flowers um, and you want to have warm and cool blues like hydrangeas, delphiniums, irises, all those sorts of things, you need some warm and cool blues. So I just use my <clears throat> brush again to clean up that palette. Um, I'll just add a little bit of the aureole and yellow to that ultramarine. And you can see straight away that it's gone to a green, but now I've run out of ultramarine, so I'll mix up some more. So just a little bit more aureolum and a little bit more ultramarine. I don't want it to go too green too quickly. And you'll see that because the aureolum is a very cool yellow to start with and it's very transparent, you'll get a much cleaner, um, crisper spring green than with the quinacridone gold because the quinacridone gold is not a pure yellow it's quite warm to start with <clears throat> so that will give you more of a grayed green than aureolan yellow with the ultramarine so that's really useful to be able to get a little a look of spring green in any vegetation that you're planting I might just take a little bit out of that and add a bit more yellow and see now we've got um, all those colours, uh, 16, 16 colours out of um, three or four paints. That's such a good skill to have. Now I'm going to mix up some grey. Greys are one of the trickiest ones that people seem to want to paint. I don't know why because grey... And it's the same with any other colour. You can only move four ways with colour. You can only go warmer or cooler or lighter or darker. So in watercolour, darker is easy. We just add less water and more pigment. Um, if you want to go lighter, add more water. Don't add white because that will go a very, very opaque and it will make any other primary, or sorry, secondary or tertiary colours muddy and dull. If you can stick to transparent colours, like the ones I use, you will make fabulous colours. So here I'm using um, just some raw sienna. Um, I've got the red, which is rose matter. And I'm after, if I mix the three, if you mix any three colours, any three primaries, you will get a grey. But it's really important for me, I want to get a very neutral grey to start with, so I don't want it too blue. I don't want it too warm. If it starts warm, it'll go to brown too quickly. So I'm getting there. That's quite a neutral grey. And that's why we have a white palette. A white palette is the ideal place to start because you can clearly see your watercolours against it. If you've got a clear plastic dish or a clear plastic palette and it's dirty underneath it's very hard to see exactly what tone your color is and also what temperature so you want a, to be able to see that quite clearly at a, at a quick glance so here I've added just um, a little bit of the quinacridone oh, sorry not quinacridone red rose matter and a little bit of the raw sienna and as I move toward the top of the column I'm just putting a tiny bit extra into each square. A little bit more of the red, a bit more of the yellow, and it will be going browner, more and more brown tones. So if you're following this exercise, it doesn't have to be, 
dark. It just needs, you can do quite pale a, a colour swatch, but do make sure that they go warmer in one direction and cooler in the other. And write down on the paper, you know, what paper you've used because all the different papers do make quite a difference. If you're using a very hot pressed paper, it'll tend to sit right on top of the paper and it'll be extremely bright because it won't seep into the paper. And if you're using a very rough paper, um, it might sink in more. Some papers uh, react quite differently to others. So it does pay to experiment what suits one artist will not necessarily suit the other artist. So it's something that you have to really try out for yourself. Maybe you can persuade your art shop to part with some samples. Lots of the paper companies provide samples for people to try out. So I'm going to mix up now another master grey because I've um, that one's got a bit dirty. So again, ultramarine, permanent rose. and the raw sienna. Try and keep your brush clean before you put it into your um, tub of paint or your palette because especially yellows get very very dirty and get very polluted very quickly so try and keep them fresh just rinse and dry your brush before you go ahead with that. So to that grey I want it to go cooler now so every time I go down, I'm just adding a tiny bit of the blue, which is the ultramarine. And these grey blues are just beautiful to use in shadows, um, in trees, in flowers, um, so shadows. In so many situations where it calls for a nice blue-grey. Um, if you're doing far distant vegetation in a misty landscape for example these tones are fabulous and you can do it wet in wet and you get the most wonderful soft far distant vegetation of trees or bushes and you don't need a huge color range in your palette you just need enough to be able to mix all the colors so here we've mixed up i think 26 colors using only five tubes of paint. We've used ultramarine, which are the two master colours there I've just drawn around. The ultramarine. We've used raw sienna. We've used aureole and yellow. We've used quinacridone red. And we've used quinacridone gold. So they're the only colours we've used and we've produced 26 colours. Um, cool blues which are the greens, warm green blues which go to the purples and we've mixed warm and cool greys. So I hope this has been really helpful to you. If you decide that you want to uh, mix your own you can experiment with as many different colours as you like. Stick to three primaries which are the colours that can't be produced by yourself like you can't mix for example a cobalt blue or an ultramarine um, unless you've got you know hours to spare and a mortar and pestle to grind it all up which I'm sure you don't but um, you can mix the secondary colors like um, oranges purples grays uh, greens they're all second or not the gray but the others the purple the orange and the green they're all secondary colors and the other colours are tertiary colours where you've got three or more mixed together. So when you do this, again, like the previous um, video that I've done, write down the colours that you've used and put the arrow like I have going down in the direction that you've gone cooler and up in the direction where you've gone warmer because it is so easy in these busy lives that we have. You... Um, pick up your paper you, with all the examples on next week um, or if you like me later in the day and you think what colour did I use there? I've got absolutely no idea. So document it at the time that you do it and you can keep them all in a folder, keep them in a file and you'll be able to refer back to them at any time. So I'm just writing here the master mix, what I have used for 
my main grey, which is the ultramarine, the raw sienna, and the rose madder. So next time, if you want to mix exactly that grey, you'll be able to do it. So if it goes to red, you know that you've got too much warmth in it, so you need to add blue. If your grey is too cool, you need to add either some red or some yellow or both until it's completely neutral. And once you've learned that skill, it, it will be invaluable to you. You'll be able to mix greys for shadows or vegetation and you can do it in the blink of an eye. Such a helpful skill to have. So I keep all my samples in uh, a two-hole ring binder so that I can flick through them to, to show students or refer back to myself. The one on the right is one I did in class for students yesterday. So um, that hasn't got as much information on as this one. but um, And the colours are slightly, they're not as dark as the one I've done today. So you can probably see the tones and the temperature of them a little more clearly. Yeah, so counting up there, we've got the 26 colours um, using Holbein watercolours. So I'll put this up at the end of the video and I'll also put up the credits um, and the materials that I've used and you'll be, you can refer back to them. The palette that I used is available from... Um, the website, uh, if you look at the links, the brushes are available, um, they're listed in the credits and I hope that you've enjoyed the video and hope it's been um, of value to you. So here's all the colours in a close-up. You can see how beautiful those warm and cool greys are and how beautiful the greens and how different the green has gone using different yellows. Raw Quin Gold on the right, sorry, Quin Gold on the left, and Aureolan on the right, and how the um, reds have gone and affected the blue. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. Happy painting!